Hello everyone, it's VT Matty, and today I'm finally going to give you guys an update to my Kovac settings uh, as of 2025. Uh, the last time that I did a guide through my settings was, I think, pretty much one year ago, 2024. And since then, there's been a lot of changes to the game and how I do things, so let's just jump right into it. I'm going to go through each one of these tabs and show you guys each of these settings first. And so you can just copy them and just have fun running what I run. So I want to save the theme and my sensitivity for later as I'm going to show a few graphics that I've made that show the changes that I've been making to my setup and uh, the differences on each sensitivity and when I run each sensitivity or theme. So I, I want to save that for later. But this is what it looks like on main. Uh, I run 103 FOV Overwatch for pretty much everything nowadays. Uh, most scenarios don't really require the higher FOV requirement. However, if you do go to older scenarios from Voltaic Season 3 uh, and some very original Kovac scenarios, they'll be uh, quite limited at 103 FOV. So usually you would bring this up to, say, 105 if you're seeing things like a little bit up close and then, you know, 110 for Vox TS. Uh, 120 for Kintias, and then, you know, 125 for maybe Psalm or some really wide stuff. As for crosshairs, I will go over this later uh, when I go over visual themes, because the crosshair that I choose highly depends on the theme that I'm running. As for game FPS, menu FPS, I keep this capped at around, like, uh, some arbitrary high number. I know that some players like to cap their FPS because of screen tearing or stuttering, but it's not really too much of an issue for me, and if it is, then I'll just cap it at like uh, something lower, like 9 on 9, but it's not really something that I notice. And menu FPS, I just keep that at like my monitor refresh rate cap because it's whatever, doesn't matter. So countdown before challenge start. I have this on at like a quarter of a second because I don't want the scenario to reset whenever I like reload the scenario and the bots will already pretty much be moving by the time like everything started. So this gives me just a quick moment to reset myself and it's just a nice delay to have before I actually like start a new run. As for keybinds, these are my keybinds. You can just copy them. Uh, honestly, it doesn't really even matter. Uh, the only thing that's different from like the original guide through my settings was that I switched like the fire key to E because sometimes I'll use my keyboard to shoot and I'll just use E. Uh, weapons, again, this is pretty much not uh, very different. Yeah, it's pretty much all the same. Video settings, again, I recommend going for the lowest settings possible so that you can squeeze out every little bit of performance out of your game. Obviously, it's the aim trainer, so it's performance. Getting good performance is not really a challenge, but um, I still think just highest frames possible, you will get the most. The one setting that I do want to talk about here is this scene color setting. Uh, you would want this on medium if you do run glowing bots, because if you have it on low or off, then you'll have you know problems running those themes with glowing bots. And yeah, I. I don't really run glowing bots anymore in most of my themes, so I could probably turn this off, but I'm just I'm just leaving it how it is. Moving on to visuals. Uh, like I said, we'll go over themes later in the video, but generally in this visual tab, you should worry about these two settings. You want to have these off and you want to have bullet hole duration set to zero. Uh, it's very distracting when I see like other players like have this stuff on. You don't want any of those extra uh, cosmetic distractions on the map during your run, so just turn all of those things off, it's it's not going to help you. And uh, this is at the moment set to Clover Alternate, which is probably the best theme in Kovacs, but we'll go over that uh, in a second. In terms of sounds, these are the sound settings that I use. Sometimes for certain hit sounds I will bring up uh, the hit pitch. And let's see what else. Uh, yeah, so these are the sounds that I use. I'll have a sound folder 
I'm not really going to go over too much over what sound that I use for each scenario. It, it is very much personal preference and I change it all the time. And I change this even all the time. Sometimes it's even slower. doesn't really matter. Uh, the one setting that I do think is fun to use uh, in especially switching scenarios is this pitch modifier. Uh, this basically just tells you if you're uh, hitting consistently in uh, consecutive shots and it will increase the pitch for each consecutive shot hit. Uh, I think it's it's a good feedback to have on certain scenarios, but I don't run it all the time. Uh, but just, just know that that's around if you want some extra audio feedback for uh, your tracking or your accuracy. And then these are my settings down here. Doesn't really matter. I've never changed them. As for UI colors, you can just copy all of this. Uh, there is a palette.ini file that I will include in the description that you can download and uh, as well like a readme file that tells you where to put it so you can get these exact colors, but this is just how I have it set up. In terms of HUD, this is all the stuff that I have on. Um, you always want to have challenge timer on as well as, let's see, uh, session stats as well as your system clock. You want to have all of that on uh, to verify your runs in Voltaic. And yeah, so this is the HUD. So I put the, the session stats or the run stats over here and the last or previous kill will pop up up here. It doesn't really matter how I have this set up. Uh, you just want to generally have your HUD be as clean as possible in the center. Um, the one exception that I might make is for movement scenarios. I might move this up closer to the center of the, uh, of the screen, just so I can track like my movement score, make sure that I'm hitting like maximum movement and yeah. So the, and then the other yeah, timer stats are up here. So that's my HUD. And in terms of miscellaneous settings, I don't really touch anything here. It's just, uh, whatever you would like to run. Uh, statistics report, I do it only on challenge completion. I don't, I don't do it always or on challenge reset or completion. I feel like that'll, I feel like that has caused some lag in the past whenever I would, uh, reset a run and I don't really want to have my like stat screen be cluttered that much. So yeah, these are all the settings that I run. Okay. So... Let's finally get to what probably half of you guys clicked on this video for, which is my sensitivities. I wanted to get past the initial walkthrough of all of the Kovac settings so that I could get to this graphic. And if you've tuned into my stream and have used the sends command on my stream, you've probably seen this graphic already. I posted this on Twitter. So as all of you guys might already know, I'm an aim trainer main. All of my optimizations in terms of my setup and my settings are made specifically to help me score better in all of my aim training scenarios. And that includes especially sensitivity. And I run a different sensitivity uh, depending on each aiming situation or each category uh, and according to like each game or each hero within a different game like Overwatch. Now I, wanna, I wanted to highlight this part. Even with these strict values, everything is still always changing. Uh, likewise, like most of these only have the rate and mid or the rate and soft. But nowadays, I've been using the infinity minus infinite speed. So this is kind of outdated. But if you want to copy this entirely, just go ahead, including like all of these various uh, sensitivity ranges for each category. But none of this is going to like instantly turn you into a good aimer at best it might just give you better odds at uh acclimating yourself to each scenario some of these are like you know intentionally chosen obviously because uh static clicking benefits from lower sensitivities so all of these as you would think are you know much lower sensitivities in the range of like 70 cm 80 cm Whereas with reactive tracking, you know, it's better usually to run higher sensitivities, such as like 25 CM to 35 CM. I can't emphasize enough how much sensitivity is really up to personal preference. Um, 
Reactive tracking, like I generally say, is better for higher sensitivities, but you know, you can run lower sensitivities here. You can run 40 CM and you'd still find some benefits. And even I find some benefits on like even lower sensitivities in some reactive tracking scenarios. So you'll just have to experiment. Now this obviously only directly applies to you if you're an aim training main like me and are only trying to get higher scores. But if you're training for your main game, for example, Overwatch, most of the time you're going to be narrowing yourself down by the number of categories that you're playing. And you should probably just pick a range of sensitivities that is most beneficial to you in those selected categories. And uh, as always, remember muscle memory is a misnomer in aim training and you shouldn't worry about changing your sensitivity uh, and messing up your feel or your consistency that that doesn't happen. So moving on to what I think is a very fun topic to talk about, visual themes. This is the Matty W. Kovac Visuals Collection, which is a Google Sheets that I made a while back that lists pretty much every single Kovacs theme that I've used over the past couple years. And it rates them based on how good I think they are. Each of these themes is linked uh, to a Dropbox link that I will make a new one, but this is uh, the Dropbox that I use for this sheet, and it contains all of these themes. And pretty much the highest rated ones, you don't really see me deviate from these days. So obviously for static, I'll use Clover Static. Dynamic, I will be using Ike New. And tracking, uh, everyone should honestly be using Clover Alternate, like uh, at this point in, in, in the aim training scene. Uh, Clover Alternate also has like good bleed over to other categories as well. You can, you can use it in dynamic looking, static looking. And uh, Emo Palace Edit for switching. With themes, again, it's even more personal preference. Um, you're going to have to experiment with what you think works for you and uh, obviously like what works for, you know, how long you want to stare at these themes and how long you want to aim train for. Like, obviously some people have had problems with Clover Alternate being too bright, so they've maybe switched to something like Sistroid's theme or the darker Clover Control theme. Uh, some people just have preferences for what, for how they want their aim trainer to look, so people obviously might prefer Emo Palace Edit, like me, over the normal Emo Palace, which has uh, the reflective walls. And for static clicking, you know, static clicking is really the only uh, rule-based theme where it's necessary to have a pure color wall because there's no reading to be done of uh, target distance away from the wall or target depth. So mostly this is just going to come down to personal preference and pick your favorite static theme. Now I understand that I haven't done an updated aim lab settings guide in a long time. I think it's also over a year, but most of the settings that I used or showcased in that old aim lab video are all going to be the same. Nothing has really changed about aim lab except for the format for how they organize settings. So if you want to have my older aim lab settings, go check out that video. It will be linked in the description. And in terms of aim lab themes, uh, in the new Dropbox that I'll be making for this, which will also be in the description, I will include my uh, newest AimLab themes that I've been using over the past few months. And that should wrap it up for my Kovac settings updated to this year, 2025. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, as well as if you use any of my settings, crosshairs, visual themes, or sensitivity ranges that I've showcased in this video in your experimentation, let me know how it goes and if you get any new high scores using my settings. Follow my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash underscore OW for more aim training content and Overwatch gameplay. And as always, happy dot clicking.